Hey, hope you're doing good out there. Um, hey, our thoughts and prayers with the guys down in Florida, uh, the Dobmans and stuff. Man, I don't know just how bad things are, but um, I saw some posts, um, you know, earlier that it was not looking that great. So, um, yeah, hope that they're doing well. I just kind of reached out to Bill here a few minutes ago just to ask him how, how things are down there. And Tell my friend Tim here, you know, so I lived in Florida for a while, man. It's beautiful. The weather there is just awesome, except when it's bad. Yeah. <laughs> when the weather's bad, it's like, it's treacherously bad, you know? So um, hopefully those guys are doing all right, but I totally understand uh, if they're not going to, you know, be on the call tonight. But, um, hey, I see there's Billy Britt. What's going on, Billy? Hope you're doing good. Brian's with us. Tim's with us. Victor's there. And Ellie Ben's in the background also. So, uh, you know, maybe this will be one of those times when the guys who don't talk all the time get to talk a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, I've got a big mouth, man. I can talk the whole time. You know, it was like getting to be about uh, 527 my time. And uh, I was like, man, I don't know if anybody's coming, you know. It was just like, and Tim showed up. Uh, I might have to just do this whole thing by myself. Could I talk for an hour all alone? Yes, I can. Nodding his head. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately, I don't have to. But anyway, hey, if you're out there and you're just watching on Facebook or something and you I haven't made it. Uh, been here. on the call before. Checking in. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's, there's Adrian. Yeah, go ahead and join us. You can uh, just click on the link in the, the event there and it'll bring you right here into the Zoom call and, and you can hang out and chat with us. And if you've got a question or comment or, you know, something. You is, Bill getting, is Bill getting blown away with the hurricane or what? Is that why he's not here? I don't know. I'm I'm curious about that. I, mean, I wasn't asking. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hopefully they're they're doing okay down there. Um, how's the weather where you're at, Adrian? Hot. <laughs> hot. I think it's hot. But yeah. it's better than that heat wave we had. A couple of weeks ago, that when it was like 115, 115 degrees, like like for three days straight. You're in Santa Cruz, so you get to enjoy that nice, cool breeze. So I'm kind of jealous of that. Doesn't really get that hot there, doesn't it? It's uh, yes. pretty nice right here, actually. I think we're in the 70s and. Uh... It was a little yeah. foggy earlier, but now the sun is out and shining. It's just like this is the best part of the year, really. In San Francisco. I love it. Yeah. 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 We, hit the, we hit the 30s this morning for the first time this year. 30s? Wow. Oh, yeah, we were in the 30s this morning up in the mountains. Pass. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of early in the in the in the season for it to be freezing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean we're 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 pretty high in elevation, so we get a little different weather than the areas around us. In the backwoods, ain't you? No, we're not in the right. backwoods. We're just we're just up high. Oh, all right. <laughs> up high. That's right. Yeah. So today, so today, guys, today I felt good, great. I did this shower insulation into glass tile. The whole thing was glass. It was great was putting my hinges on, drilled the holes perfectly in the right spot, drilled my screws in their place, no cracking. And so when I got done, I was releasing the pressure from the bottom from my jacks. And guess what? Oh. <laughs> A bunch of cracks. A bunch of them, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, the weight from the screw, I don't know. But I, I did put anchors in there so they could have some cushion around it. No, I didn't make it like three holes cracked on me. I'm like, oh, damn. But uh, I did warn the customer. I do have terms and conditions regarding that, and they still paid me, and they're going to just leave it like that. And I'm like, I apologize. I mean, they were perfect. 
It's just, I don't know the pressure from the screws and the weight of the door. I think it just, uh, I think it was too much, but I would, I, I caught wood though. So it doesn't make sense. How come they broke the, the tiles, the, the, the glass broke. I'm just, I was kind of pissed today. But glass tile. Glass tile. Yeah. I should have used the pivots. I was thinking about, man, I should have used pivots instead. Uh, because the uh, curb wasn't pivot, wasn't um, glass. It was um, um, quartz. They put quartz on the bottom and mm -hmm. on the on the pony wall too. So I was like, damn it. Yeah, it's just. Oh man, it looked good until, like I said, when I was releasing the bottom, my bottom jacks, just to, you know, and that's when it happened. Mm. Uh, as soon as some weight went on there, huh? Yep. Mm. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the pivots. Um, you know, then, I mean, you still have to drill the top, right? But there's only a couple yeah. holes and probably just one tile, you know. So when you get, when you guys pressure. Do, yeah, when you guys do the pivot hinges, I know you got to put one on the ground and then the one on top, I know it has like the little leg that comes off. Do you put the hinges before or after? Or how do you, how do you, how, what's the steps you guys do for those? Because I, don't never i'm never installed them i mean i've done pivots where you had header that's fine i i know how to do those but when you're using uh to wall what are the kind of steps that you guys do to make those work like to get the install i'll tell you I'll, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead brian it's <laughs> i'll set uh i'll set my bottom pivot off measurements um, I'll clamp my top pivot to the glass. I'll mount, you know, I'll put the door up there, plumb it up, make sure it lines up with the panel. I'll mark my top holes, uh, hold the door out, drill, loosen that hinge, secure it. And then um, once my door is secured on the bottom, I'll take that top plate off again and I'll, I'll block it um, mm -hmm. inside that notch cutout so it can't go anywhere. Yeah. Um, I just did one yesterday and, uh, we used pivot hinges and it was like, it worked out pretty well, except the one, one of the holes on the bottom pivot, I ended up, I mean, dead nuts on a screw head. Oh, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't have lined it up any better. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And, yeah. and I, I worked at it for a little while and. I mean, I was, I just snapped a couple bits and I was like, dude, I'm just smoking bits here, man. I'm not getting, I'm not getting anywhere with this thing. So I, I eventually I just gave up on it and ended up cutting a screw. And I mean, I grabbed, you know, I didn't grab by much, but I grabbed by enough. Um, but it was like, you know, it was, it was like hard. One of those things, like you don't want to give up on it. You know, you want to keep going at it. And it's like, dude, how much time am I going to put into this one hole? You know, this thing's killing me right now but uh that's how i i mount them I'll, I'll mount my bottom one off of measurements and then kind of line try. up the top i'm gonna give them a try i'll try out yeah yeah give them a try some guys love them i mean i'm i i find it easier you know for me uh i think it's still easier with a wall mount hinge but yeah, you know, I don't I don't get any slippage with the pivots. I get, you know, there's no I'm not getting callbacks for door adjustments and stuff like that. I mean, that's a definite benefit. Yeah. Mm. Brian, what I'll, I'll tell you, uh, you don't need to have long screws going in the bottom. And sometimes yeah. for my guys just to do um, not a real deep hole anyway, use a three quarter inch screw. Not going anywhere. Yeah, and it's it's bottom, it's really got no tension on it. It's got no yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you just want to make sure that the pivot doesn't spin, right? I mean, you just need to grab enough to keep it from from yeah, moving around. Pivot, you know, the pivot from pivoting on the screw. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've had to go into uh, heated floors with them and had to you know go really shallow uh, in certain areas to make sure we didn't hit the heated floors, and they've still been solid and been there for you know years. So you don't have to go too deep. Now, when you're going into a heated floor, do you are you getting a layout of the of the heating elements, the pipes and stuff prior, like from the contract or whatever, so you kind of know your placement? Uh, with good contractors, yes. <laughs> with the ones who are stupid, no. We have the ones, you know, running running heated 
across the you know the the break of the floor is an idiotic move to me. Typically, sure. you're going to run one wire across, and if it's going in the shower, then you then you crisscross through in there. But I've had a few that just go ahead and crisscross it right across the break, and then it's a mess. So we had one that was lined up perfectly with a wire. Uh, so we just went in really shallow and then put the other screw in a little bit deeper to make sure we were good. But, yes, we we try to always ask when it's a zero-entry shower beforehand so we're prepared. But uh, sometimes that doesn't happen until the back end, and then it's a you know, heat gun and, you know, Put the put the responsibility on somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I I do pretty much the same thing Brian does. Um, I'll I'll mount my bottom pivot, and then I'll I'll mount the top pivot on the glass. So then um, I can set the bottom. If there's a fixed panel, you know, I'll use a Whitlock clip, of course, at the top, you know, to hold it on layout. And then just set it in place, you know, if you get the dimension right at the curb, you know, so that, you know, you got the same reveal across the door and you clamp, you know, those two panels together in the top right corner, it's going to hold your pivot exactly where it goes. Now, my little trick is I'll, I'll mark the first hole. Actually, I'll drill it in place. You know, that first hole of the one that's closest to the glass and I'll mount that screw. Then I'll take my shims out i'll take everything out and let it hang free so i can line it up with the the fixed panel if there is a fixed panel and make sure that it's it is lining up because if it's off a little bit i can note you know the amount that it's off and what direction and then i can block it back up pull that first screw out and then move the pivot over to where it needs to be to make it line up right drill that second hole and then um and then it'll hold it on place while I drill through. You know, I, you have to put that the original hole, you know, off the original layout a little bit, which is kind of hard to do, especially if it's only like less than a quarter of an inch or something. But if you get that first screw in first, you can. Then you can get come back, you know, put a plug in there or whatever you have to do um, in order to get that second screw in. And then it's just like perfect. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like the idea of blocking that top inch too. You know, I, I rarely do that, um, but uh, because you know those pivots, I mean, they rarely sag anyway. But the great thing is you can do that if you need to. And um, sometimes if it'll if the door is dragging, you can also put a little block on top of the bottom pivot, and mm-hmm. it'll hold it up a little bit higher for you too. You know, but uh, I find those like real easy to work with and. Wherever I can use it, I'll try to I'll try to do that. I'm trying to do more and more of those um, as time goes on. I really like them. Yeah, I'm doing yeah, the same I, thing here too. Yeah, I've been using them more regularly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, there's one thing that I do that the bottom pivot, I twist a little bit towards inside when I have like a L strike on the panel. So that way, when I don't have like the five the five degree pin, mm-hmm. I put a little bit towards inside the, the bottom one, and then make sure the, the the door is always closing. Yeah, a little positive uh, pressure on it, huh? Yes. Yeah. That's I don't cool. know if somebody else do, does the same thing here. You know, I've been using the Dobman's hardware from uh, my shower mm-hmm. door. Um, their mm-hmm. their pivots are adjustable. There's a yeah. standard pivot is adjustable. So um yeah. so you don't have to worry about that. You can actually That's true. after it's set, you can you can tweak it a little bit, which is pretty yeah. awesome. That's one of the one of the things I love about their hardware. You know, another mm-hmm. thing is just that it holds, I mean, they're so strong. I mean yeah. they'll hold so they're, much. It doesn't matter if it's a half inch door. I mean, it really doesn't matter how big it is. I don't I don't know what the the upper limit of them are, but they're stout. Yeah, that is so, top-notch stuff. I yeah. I used to work for a glass crafter. They used pretty much the same stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's cool. So if you can um, if you can do that, I, I'd highly highly recommend that. That's I try to use that. You know, whenever I do pivots, that's pretty much what I'm using. Um, so that's pretty cool. Is the time saver too? The same as the Prima. 
Um, yeah, it's similar. It's similar to the Cardiff. They're on um, square. Okay, but the cutout um, and the glass would be the same. It's different, but I found that it will work with uh, the CRL cutout. So, um, so if I'm working with in glass uh, showers online and stuff, I don't want to have to do like redo the whole cutout thing. I'll just spec it as Cardiff, and the cutout's a little bit bigger um, than what you know they spec but it works, works just fine. And it gives you kind of like a lot of adjustment, you know, not, I mean, not that you need it, you know, because, because the, the gaps are pretty tight, you know, but, um, but it's pretty nice. It's, it's easy to work with. Yeah. yeah. We've used, we've used multiple manufacturers with it, Brad, and, and we haven't had any issues with anybody's standard notch working mm -hmm. with oh. those pivots. Oh, that's interesting. That's good to know. Yeah. I think, Southeastern's pivot hinge is different. And I haven't tried it yet, um, but their notch, I think, is different. Yes. They, they use a completely different pivot style than C.R. Lawrence, FHC, HMI. Uh, theirs is completely different. We used to use Southeastern back, you know, 15, 20 years ago. They completely went with a different look on their pivots. They even use a no-notch pivot. Um, for quite a while. No, I don't know if they still are because we've moved away from them now. But they yeah. used the no-notch style for a long time. Um, Greg in Knoxville would know quite a bit about their stuff if you wanted to ask him. I think he used to – I don't know if he still does or not, but I know he used to use a lot of Southeastern stuff. Yeah, so. he's got me interested in it. That's why I was kind of thinking about it. Um, maybe I ought to just check out Dobman's instead, but uh, – I, I opened up in the southeastern. I haven't bought anything yet. So. Yeah. Our struggle was just access to product with them. It went from really good to really bad really quick. Um, mm -hmm. And they were really good for a long time for us, but there was there was a I don't know what happened, you know, seven or eight years ago with them, but uh but we had we had some issues with getting product for a while. So um, but they did they have nice stuff. It's but it, it's different. That's I like different. So they have a different look to a lot of their hardware. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Southeastern Aluminum. I don't think they're going to be out your way, Tim. No. Florida-based, Florida-based company. Cool. Yeah, I've never worked with that, so I mean, I'm not 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 familiar with it. But uh, well, they would be uh, comparable to like Dobbins? Dasco or somebody. Yeah, okay. Dobbins make their own hardware, right? Um, they, uh, they're not making it. I mean, they're not actually manufacturing it, but they have their own brand. Yeah. They're, so they're gotcha. sourcing their own. Gotcha. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I don't know. I've worked with a lot of hardware over the years and, um, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I mean, I really like Bill and Keith and those guys. They're great guys, you know? So it's like, they're, I consider them my friends, but all that aside, their hardware is awesome, dude. It's awesome, man. I mean, it is so like well put together, and um, yeah, it's just really easy to work with and never a problem. So, how long I mean, did it take to get uh, hardware from them? Pretty quick. I mean, I think like a week. You know, just, you know yeah. Uh, yeah. They be pretty I mean, they're not they're not technically distributors, right? You know, so they're they're sending hardware out, but it's got to you know. It's kind of relationship based on usage and how you're going to, you know, put it out there for others to see it, that kind of thing. Right. So because they're not a distributor. I mean, that's exactly that's very clear with their stuff, you know, and they make that very clear because priority one is that they use their stuff for their business, you know, <laughs> so um, but it is great stuff. My, my big thing is I, I feel like a lot of guys feel like if they use pivots, like you have to completely switch to pivots. We haven't done that. We still use everything. If I feel like a pivot is the right thing to do, we use pivots. If I feel like hinges are right, we use hinges. I don't feel like you have to just like dive head first into one option and one option only. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Especially with hardware access over the last few years, I've really spread us out to like, like having access to multiple designs, multiple options, and then we leave it open. So we're not so restricted by this is what we do. And if you know we can't find it, it causes a problem. That's, that's more been my my push is the pivots are awesome. I love them. Less holes, better distribute uh, distribution of weight. 
Yeah. But he can't always use them. You know, that's just the honest truth. You can't, they don't work for every application. Hinges are still out for a reason. So um, I think just, you know, be open to all of them. Absolutely. I couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. You guys like using the offset hinges? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Where, where you need them. Uh, in fact, even like, even if you don't need them, they're a clean look, you know? I use them all the time. That's, that's yeah. all the I wouldn't that's blame my, you. For, that's my preference. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you for that. It's cool having the un, you know, the, the hardware not exposed, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you got some limitation as to you know what width and, and weight. And then, and then you don't have to take the door down. You can always drill in place because they're sticking out far enough where you're not going to hit the, the the hinge. So it's, yeah, it's, it's easy to drill those in place. Oh yeah. Yeah. True. Let me ask you this: Have you guys ran into more? So we're running into more what we call a zero entry or a curbless design. Um, and the tile installer will not bring the tile out past the break of the floor. Mm -hmm. So that's causing us to have to use more of the offset hinges. I think that's happening more regularly throughout the country because the offset hinges are then harder to get a hold of sometimes in the finish you may need because that style is becoming so prevalent. Mm -hmm. We use them quite a bit. Not, I mean, I don't know, 10% of the time maybe, but we use them. And uh, for that one reason too, um, I think the problem I have is that first of all, if there's not wood in the wall, you only got three holes, you know, to support your door. Um, and if the tile isn't uh, squared right, then the, the, the hinge can be skewed. Now you got to shim more than with a, regular H plate or full yeah. back plate. You just turn the pivots if you need to. Yeah, and the pivots the are kind of a good way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that too. Sometimes if the wall's off and the if the door swings in, I just, I just take the hinge apart and switch it around and switch it to a five degree and then and it works. perfectly fine. Yeah. But it just add, it does add more work because like you're, you know, you got your door up, you drill your holes, you're thinking you're done, and all of a sudden, a freaking door swings down, like, oh, God. So you got to go back, shift back up, get it down. It takes more time. I mean, and sometimes you smash your finger, cut your finger on the damn thing. I hate taking those hinges apart. I hate it. <laughs> I, I hate it. Don't you have a little bar you put on there to turn it? Yeah, you have a little tool. Yeah. What, what, what tool are you talking about? They make a tool to put on the, on the pin. You still have to take the it you down, take it right? Apart, but once you take it apart, there's a tool you put on there that'll. So I just get my little um, flat screwdriver and I just wedge it in there, take it apart. There's a tool for this. Yeah. There's a tool once you once you take the hinge apart and expose the pin. Uh huh. There's a tool you can put on there that'll, that'll turn it. Well, let's see here. I'm gonna see my bite right now. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, CRO makes a little tool for that. Just order that. Really? I got one. I wanted to that epic... that sits right on top of the. I don't know if I've ever used the one that I've got. Because <laughs> oh. once you got this hinge apart, it's really, I don't know how much time it saves you. Yeah. You know? It's a good tool to have. You still got to take the hinge apart. I think it's just as easy to back up those two little screws and flip it over as it is to like. Well, use that, the that doesn't work. Then you got to take it all apart and flip it over and make it go the other way. Yeah. Are you talking about the five degree deal, and your yeah. and you got a tool that actually changes the pin or something, or what are you talking about? Hang on. Okay. It just there's a tool that actually just it turn you turn it, um, the little pin, and it and it sets it to the other side to the five degree offset. It's interesting. Yeah, if you look on Cyril's website, I'm sure they'll show you the tool and um, how it works. You know, but. Like I say, I mean, once you've got the hinge apart, once you've got the, it off the, the door and apart, I mean, it's not, it's save, it might save you, you know, that, that last five minutes, you know, or something, but, but it's just as easy to, you know, back the two little screws out, flip the thing over. And, right, right. You know, and then basically you're using the hinge to turn that pin. Well, this tool does that instead of using the pin, the hinge to actually torque it over or whatever. <clears throat> okay. 
Didn't know yeah. they had one. Yeah. Hey, we're learning stuff. Yeah. I, I, I hate that, though. I try to avoid that wherever I can. Oh, my gosh. That little five for five degree thing. And do you, like, change, like, one hand and not the other one? Do you change both of them? What? Whatever you need. Whatever you need. So, yeah, because sometimes you can just flip one, and that'll do enough, right, to mm -hmm. get, get you what you need, you know? If the door is just slightly ajar, and you just can't get it to line up. There you go. Yeah, Dana Higginbotham says a crescent wrench works just fine. So he's probably right. Yeah. <laughs> probably you so. If you have a crescent wrench, I, I don't think I've got a crescent wrench in my, my toolkit anymore because I'm a prima donna. I've got a toolbox like this big. It's got about 22 tools in it. That's all I ever need. You know, that's good. You're not lugging around a ton of weight. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know? I love it. And it's got, it's a little stool so I can stand on it too. Because it seems like I'm always like about six inches too short to do everything. Yeah, right. I understand. That's that. just a personal thing though. Yeah, yeah. It's not your problem. It's just my problem. <laughs> My problem too. Yeah, me three. <laughs> you got that too? Yeah, I hear it's going around. Yeah, don't catch it. <laughs> um, we were talking about drilling holes and one of my installers struggled. I mean, we do most of the shower doors that the only thing we haven't done is like a cabo at this point. But um we were doing a Cambridge and this, that stainless steel bar. And my guy was trying to drill and he just kept burning up bits. And we do it all the time. He does it all the time. Mm -hmm. But this one particular situation, we just had a hard time. And um, it, I think, I kind of have a theory because I had him bring back a piece of it when he got done because he finally finished. And we were able to drill it just fine. It seems like he started out maybe with a dull bit and must have hardened that steel even more or something. But he even used new bits on a on a, a hole he had been working on, and he had a hard time. He kept burning up. He burned up like three or four bits. Wow. And, uh, is anybody? What is, what is, that's an interesting thought. Is that a possibility? That he actually like tempered the steel by um, heating it up. But what is he drill? Why is he drilling at Cambridge? Because those you don't drill. Now, nah, I think he's actually talking about uh, um, Serenity. Serenity. Uh, you know what? I don't know if it was a Serenity or. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't drill a, a Cambridge. Uh, a Serenity, probably. Yeah. I hate those. <laughs> you too I, I think i did two of those and then that was it i never did i, 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 the chris, I don't like them either I want it let's do the chris I, I stay away from those yeah serenities i don't like those at all yeah, yeah. but but it was just weird that you couldn't drill that hole it took him a long time and burned up some bits has anybody run into that that is weird i think i saw that post i think i made a comment on that post I know. Um, did Christina send out? Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Okay. That was it. Christina posted it. And uh, yeah, you know, um, yeah, you know, it's just like the secret to, to drilling like something really hard is, you know, low, low RPMs. Yeah. Um, and lube, lubricant, you know, I mean, uh, a new, new drill bit's good too. But um, I wonder, you know, if there's something to what you were saying, you know, if like if you could. Heat, heat it up and actually make it harder with a, what kind of drill with a dull drill bit. Cobalt. Yeah, he's using a cobalt bit. He uh, went to Home Depot even, which cost him some time and got a uh, Milwaukee cobalt bit. It yeah. has a little tip on it, and I never use those. You know, like a self-piloting tip on the thing so you do doesn't walk on you. Mm -hmm. Um he bought one of those or a couple of them and burned burn them up. You know what's funny is that um, those headers are like thin. Yeah. They're yeah. 
thin. I, I mean, I I don't know what gauge that steel is, but they're um they're so like, which is why we don't use them because like they're they're like wobbly. They're so thin. Mm. Um, and I hate that having to to drill the you know drill on the site like that, especially for something like that. But ah, you know me. I and you got I complain about everything. I know the fast nail. And then you got to be spot on too with your hole. I mean, not nah, you're screwed. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you can kind of warble it out, you know. I mean, hope that the fitting covers, you know, if you drill a bigger hole or something. But yeah, I really didn't. I didn't. Have you ever heard of uh, the company called Fast Nail? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's who I buy all my bits from. Yeah, those guys are pretty good. And those bits go right through that. What's the name of it? Fast and all. Fast and all. Yeah. F A S T N A L. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've got, I got two of them. I think. But what, what uh, bits are you getting from them? It's, I go over there and get them out of their, their uh, store in Salinas. And they're just, just uh, the regular high speed steel high -speed drill bits, yeah, right? Yeah. Really good. Uh, I mean, they yeah. go right through. Yeah. yeah Is it's it like uh, black oxide or you're getting uh, cobalt? No, it's not cobalt. Let me see if I can find. Let me go see if I can find it. Okay, go. so hey, so you guys. Okay, so if you guys go past a Mack truck, a, a, a Mack, they have a set of drill bits. Four hundred bucks though. Okay, lifetime warranty. You break one, get dull, they'll replace it. I bought set, and I'll, I'll never go. I don't have to go anywhere to buy bits anymore. My, my breaks, I call them up. They bring me one right to my front door. I replace it. Boom, done. Wow, four hundred bucks, bucks though. But four hundred bucks buy-in, you're set for life. Set for life, you know. Even if I lose one, they'll still replace it for me. Really? <laughs> yes, dude. That that right there is an excellent. It, it is a big. I mean, I would walk to my truck and grab it for you guys, but my truck's on the other side of my shop. I don't feel like walking. Oh yeah. But, no, no, don't don't hurt yourself. But, but, <laughs> but it's a big box. It it has so it, it's. Yeah, lifetime. It's got a lot of drill there. bits in it, huh? Oh, it has so much in there. It has every size you need. It's a nice set. 400 bucks, though. 400 bucks. Worth, worth every dime. Bargain at twice the price. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So I've already broken some, messed them up, bet one. Oh, yeah. They, no problem. So this no, is what I buy that. from Fastnail. It's a T190-AG jobber. A jobber? Yeah. So that'll drill through like anything. They go, I mean, they work great. Jobbers are what you should have. Like even like Brian drilling through that um, screw head. Yeah. That's what you use a jobber. Well, they'll, for. they'll go right yeah. through anything. Yeah. T190-AG jobber. Okay. And they come in like whatever size you need, I suppose. Yeah, they they have all the sizes, you know. Order three sixteenths, nine sixty four. So you know. But they were writing great. this down. I think I might just do that myself. Yeah, T one ninety dash A. A G. A G. Yeah. Jobber. Jobber. Awesome. I used to have hey. one down the street and then they closed the place, so I have to go to Salinas now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We had one down Santa Cruz down near near downtown. Um, it's probably still there. I haven't been there in a long time. Years. Yeah, but they're real, they're good for you want stainless steel lag bolts and stuff. I mean, mm. yeah, certain yeah. things, I mean, it makes it makes it easy. You can get cock there, you can get um a lot of different a lot of different things screws you know um stainless stuff and yeah you're a good supplier i like that store yeah store. yeah um do we have anybody here that's uh tempering i mean because it seems like we don't have a lot of the folks today probably because the storm but um i have a tempering question also we can hold off if you got more to talk about. We don't. Nobody is here. Okay. 
Do you guys ever experience like a tiger stripe on the glass that you normally don't see it, but this customer, it, I've got low iron shower guard. And so when they take a shower, okay, they see these tiger stripes on, where it steams up. Okay, now it's doing its job, it's staying clean. You know, they're not having any problems with spotting or anything else. I was just wondering, is that a tempering thing, you know, from the rollers or is that a, uh, that's, that's an OCD thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. But I've told, you know, <laughs> told these people that what I can do is talk to some of the people in my group and, you know, just see what they say. And, uh, Seek, seek therapy is what I would yeah. say. <laughs> I mean, if you're tripping on the pattern that happens on your glass when it steams up, you need, you need professional help. Right. <laughs> well, we're, we're changing out a door right now in a semi-frame with streaks all over it when it steams up. They won't pay their balance unless we change the door out. So it's something that wouldn't bother me, but... What do you do when you need my, when you need the balance paid on the shower? Mm. Yeah, I mean you're gonna have like a, a certain percentage of customers like that. That's just gonna you know you're you're just gonna have to eat that. Um, you know I, I remember hearing somebody telling a story a sales guy, long time ago, many years ago. He told told me a, told a story about he was working at like a Kmart or something, and um, somebody brought in a big wheel. Remember big wheels? Yeah. 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 Someone brought in a big wheel. It was broken. It was like obvious they drove the, their car. Right. And um, and there was this manager and then his, you know, his associate, sales associate, whatever, you know, and the guy came in to return it. And the the, you know, the green guy was like mad. He didn't want to refund the guy's money. And uh, the wiser manager guy was like, hey, look. There is a tiny fraction of customers that are like this, and it's worth it just to give them their money back. And it, it's that really stuck with me. Um, and my experience has been like that. There's probably like maybe five percent less than that, three three percent of customers yeah, yeah. that are just unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Sure unreasonable and like you know like you know there is such a thing as like mental illness and stuff like that i mean there are people who just like they they really can't they really can't cope in the real world and there's no, you're never going to explain it to them you're never going to get through to them you're better off just you know paying the bill you know walking away get away from that thing you know as, as quickly as you can and just making a note you know and in, in your log, it's like, hey, yeah, watch out for this guy in the future. Um, because the world is just not, we, we don't have a perfect world, you know. And um, Well, they need to have an app. I've said this a million times to a million people, but they need to have a, a tradesman's app that they can rate customers. <laughs> Yelp, Yelp for yeah. owners, right? What's that? Yelp, Yelp for, for owners. owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a sales rep subscribe once. to that and pay money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and a buddy actually talked about like starting something like that for real. Well, I've talked about it, but uh, I don't know. I've talked about it. But my uh, son-in-law would be one that could actually do an app. You know, he does uh, hard coding and stuff. So. Yeah. But, Nice. Yeah. yeah. You got to have a feature where you can turn off their Google reviews as soon as you review them, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you. Back. You got you to have that feature. <laughs> like Airbnb, we have one and people review it. My wife. Oh, yeah. There you go. Airbnb. They do that. Yeah. And these people. Will yeah. Do this stuff. It's kind of the same thing on um, eBay. If you shop on eBay, you can rate your customers. Mm hmm. You know, but everybody signed up. You see, the problem is people are in uh, the private domain. 
unless they put themselves in public domain. Now we're all operating in the public domain. We've all went out and got a license, um, got a fictitious business name, got a corporation, whatever. All those things places uh, place us squarely in the public domain where we're, um, we have a target on us. You know, whereas a private individual doesn't have to. I mean, they can do business with who they want and then slink back off into um, the shadows. And uh, there's really no way that you can, like, you know, ID them or, or, um, or review them, you know. But I don't know. I mean, if you get into a certain, um, you know, relationship where, you know, people put themselves out there where they can get rated and then you can, you know, but. Hmm. Well, one problem is there's a lot of contractors that are not very good contractors, and then they don't they wouldn't be good at rating customers, and they'd probably be the ones that fault a lot of times. So it would have to be something that would take that into account. But anyway, <laughs> that's right. You know what I mean? It's tricky. It's tricky. Yeah, that's not my gig. Mm -hmm. I had a sales rep once, really nice guy. He told me glass was to look through and not at. <laughs> and another time he came down to look at this house, the window washer scratched all the glass and he stood there and told the owner, he goes, you have an employee problem. You know. <laughs> I mean, this guy was a crusty little salesman. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well hey getting back to like adrian's first thing that he was talking about drilling that um glass tiles okay. and uh you know the kind of the the bad day that he had doing that it was terrible dude man it was <laughs> and all of a sudden here they come damn crack kids man I'm crackheads. <laughs> Did you shove the plug through the tile? What was that? Did you shove the plug through the tile? No. no. Oh. Should I have done that? Yeah. Yeah. Dean. I didn't. Well, I drew the the I, I drilled a uh quarter inch hit, uh hole instead of my normal three sixteenths because you know the, the screws that I use they require three sixteenths. But uh yeah, so I drilled a little. I should have did five sixteenths. Yeah, I'll do five sixteenths in the glass tile. Say what? I couldn't get a hold of to any uh any uh five sixteenths bits this morning, so I had to do what I had. So, but like I said, everything went good. And then all of a sudden, took off my jacks in the bottom, and the weight just dropped. And the weight didn't drop, but I think just the pressure of the How glass. Big was the door. What was that? How big was the door? I was a 30, 30 inch door by eighty. No. Oh. What did you do? Is Not super big. Hinge? What was that? Did you use a full back hinge on it, or no offset? I wonder if that's what I wonder if that could have been it. The problem with the offset. I don't know. I don't know, but like I said, the customer knew ahead. I, I, you know, like I said, I have terms and conditions. I send all my customers, and and a job like that, I always, I always cross cross my eyes, dot my t's when I explain to customers, hey, this could happen, and I'm not responsible to replace any of the tile, glass tile, or anything. So they understand from the minute. And so, yeah, yeah, there were, unfortunately, you know, it happened. They knew about it. You know, they had to pay me my balance. That was it. There was no, that was it. I told them that, I told them that I would take down the door at no cost mm. to repair it. But, I'm, yeah, that was part of the deal. And I, you know, I strongly, I didn't want to do it, but they kept on poking the bit. <laughs> 
that's a good compromise. You know, it's like, Hey, I'll tell you what, if, you know, if the tiles cracked, I'm, I'm willing to take the door down, like put it back in. Or I, usually know. I, I don't usually I'm saying, Hey, you know, cause everything is right in my terms and conditions. It's, it's all in there. It's all written, you know, down to the tiniest thing. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, but I'm nice enough to do that because it was an expensive unit. It was, it was almost five grand for the shower door. So, yeah. <clears throat> but it was fast. I mean, even the, uh, the, the plumber that had a hard time that was putting on the, the valve and stuff, he broke the tile. It cracked on him yeah. where I was like, okay, you know, it's like, you know, I, I did not want to do it. I swear. That's why my price was high and it kept on poking, poking me to do it. Fine. So I ended up doing it for them. Um, and we had, I had a job once where the lady wanted it was glass tile. And she wanted me to follow the grout line. And I said, no way. You know, I'll blow the tiles apart. And then plus, glass doesn't come what you want it. It's off, it's off here. Mm-hmm. You know. So I I moved out just a little bit and then she went ballistic and screwed the contractor. Not, you know, nothing I had, you know. It was a disaster. <laughs> But I didn't break any tile, though. <laughs> That's good. Well, here's a thing. Have- here's a thing about that 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 I thought about. Um, I was, you know, I was, I don't know, it's probably scrolling on the internet somewhere, and then I saw this ad for this stuff that fixes like cracks, right? I'm sure you've seen it. It's like glue and a syringe, right? Used for like a windshield or something to fill mm-hmm. those cracks in. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, wow, I wonder if that stuff would work on a glass tile. If you crack the glass tile, if you couldn't fill that stuff with that. Because, like, there's no way I would trust that stuff, like, on my windshield, you know, to be, like, permanent or, or to solve it. But I have a feeling that for a glass tile, if it would even, like, camouflage, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? If it would even hide it. That would be a great solution. So I bought mm-hmm. some of that stuff and I put it in my glove box and it's still in my glove box. <laughs> <laughs> like, I haven't had to drill any glass tile. <laughs> probably has a use by date on it too. It probably yeah, yeah. does. I'm sure it expires. You know? <laughs> but what do you think? Do you think Let's that's a clever out. idea? Do you think it might work? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's a gonna dull, try. dull store in hot places, too. Yeah, right, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. can't remember what I paid for it, you know, but I thought, man, that would be um, – that would, that would be brilliant if that worked. Well, there'll be people at the show who sell that kind of stuff, and maybe we could ask them. Yeah, if it works on glass tile, I mean, I don't know why it, why it wouldn't. It, you know, it's made for glass. I mean, they and then like the little demonstration video there. It's usually they're working on a windshield, right? Mm-hmm. And they're like just you know they've got a syringe and they're kind of filling in the crack yeah. on the windshield. Well, it works good on windshields though, because they had you know starbursts in my uh, windshield numerous times and had it fixed. It's if it works on a windshield, I know it would work on glass tile. Mm-hmm. We do, we uh, fix rock chips here, and uh, it's a whole different. Yeah, I mean, I thought when when I broke the tile this morning, I was like, I wonder if that would work. But then there's too many cracks. I ain't gonna waste my time. Well, you and, and you'd have I, to have it with you. I thought about it. I thought about it. I mean, I don't know where you would go pick some up. Like, I'm, I don't know if you can go to Home Depot and get some. Maybe you can. No, I buy. Yeah, my, you, you can buy get the you can get the stuff at Home Depot. Really? See, because yeah, that... not the same, not the same exact stuff, but they say it's for like, you know, like if you break a wine glass or something, it'll like kind of glue it back together. And yeah, because all similar you have, stuff, you don't really have to fix the crack. You just have to hide it, hide it, right? It go away, make yeah. it go away. And so especially, a... you know, in your situation where the customer already knows like, oh, man, you know, this, this is on me. If you could pull something out and go like, hey, check this out. Let's see if this works. And you squirt a little of that stuff in there. And if it made it go away, then you'd be like a superhero. 
Think about it. I'm not saying it'll work. I'm just saying it might work. Try it and report back to you. <laughs> That's right. Because I'm not going to be drilling any glass tile. So uh, yeah. that's yeah. probably never going to happen for me. But so it could happen will. for you. Yeah, we will. It's doable. You know, one other thing, somebody was telling me that, uh, talking about drilling problems, um, quartzite, okay? Uh, if you run into quartzite ever, that stuff is the hardest stuff in the world. Quartzite. <laughs> Not quartz, but quartzite, natural quartz, basically. Not man made. Uh, has anybody had that experience? I think that's what I'm drilling on a deck right now. Quartzite. Yeah, Chris? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, there's some like granite that is, um, we were doing this job the, right down on the beach. There was three, um, three showers. And the first one I went into, um, it was all granite. They put in like, it was like big, huge slabs of granite, the whole bathroom. These guys must have had just money to burn. And so went into the first one and it was like, you know, no problem, drilled it. Second one, same thing. The third one had a different kind of grant than the other two. And I started drilling that and drilling. I mean, I could not drill through it. I mean, I was going through bit after bit. I was, was trying it? like all the different kinds of bits. It's um, quartzite. It's quartzite. Yeah. Yep. And then finally, what I did is like I um I went back to, to my shop and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna. I, it was getting late in the day. I was like, yeah. Just going off of here for the day. Next day, I brought back my corded DeWalt roto hammer um, and plugged it in. That thing, you know, because I'm just always using corded tools, probably like everybody else, you know. And uh, so I brought back an electric DeWalt roto hammer, and uh, that made pretty quick work of it. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh. Well, you probably used a different kind of bit. You didn't use no. like bit. masonry masonry drills. Just like the six inch, I use like, uh, well, the ones I'm using now are the ones that, that come from um, Scott Industries. The um, I, I like their drills. I'm trying to think of what they're called. Oh, I'll probably think of it. But um, they're six also, inch, six oh, inch roto hammer drill bits, you know, regular masonry, dr masonry drills. Have you ever used the Realton bits? They sell them on CRL. I think it's basically the same thing. Real sharp at first. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they cut real good at first. first. Right. Yeah. Uh, I can see that working, but, you know, I was spending, I think, about six bucks or five or six bucks a bit for one of those. Yeah. 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 You're going to go through. I mean, it's still way cheaper than, than my time, you know. <laughs> I mean, go through. I went through a dozen of them for sure. sure. Well, I tell you what, we had one where the guy had a uh, neo angle, big neo angle, had quartzite caps with big overhangs. I mean, we had to cut into them to slide the glass into it, just the glass panels. I went out and bought a quartzite blade, and uh, it has a lot more diamond in it, and it has grooves to get the dust out. And, uh, anyway, 50 bucks, basically. <clears throat> so um, it was successful. I'll just nice. say it was successful. I was real proud of my guys for getting it, getting it done. And um, so it was a very tricky shower. But, you know, I just wanted to bring up the quartzite thing because you guys, I've been told that it's kind of a newer thing. Uh, I've run into it a few times through the years, but you ought to be prepared for it. Like if you know or suspect it might be something other than granite, because it looks kind of like granite. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it will cost you in some bits. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I just, you know, I just left that roto hammer that after that, I just left that in my van. Cause I've got plenty of room in my van for stuff. I just don't want to haul, haul a whole bunch of tools I don't need. But if I need that thing once every five years, I'll be super glad that I, I hauled it with me everywhere I went for five years. You know, <laughs> next time I use it because mm, it was a yeah, healthy. made a huge difference. Right. Hilti? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back when I was uh, in the uh, commercial class, yeah. man, that that was – Hilti makes some great tools. <clears throat> I've got one that's still in the metal case. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. One that weighs a ton. Then I have a newer one. That's what I use. We're doing a, a 100 feet of glass railing in a port side stone. Oh, yeah. A big old, like, and Hilti. And it went, it went right through it. But it burned. I mean, I bought a Milwaukee bit and it worked. And then I went to Hilti and got their bits and they worked. Because they take the same shank. Mm -hmm. yeah. You had a lot better luck with the Hilti bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back when yep. we first started using Hilti, the end would go off in concrete and still drill a hole through. Yeah. They're awesome. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Have to agree. Have cool. to agree. Yeah, that was back, back when, uh, back in the day, you know, before we had really powerful battery operated tools, you know, it was like Makita, you know. The long battery. Like, uh, Makita with the long battery. I still have Yeah. That. Yeah. I, I mean, it was one. great, you know, for a couple holes. And especially if there was some place where, you know, you really couldn't get power to and you just had to go drill a hole. It was mm -hmm. like it would save the day, you know. Battery only lasts like 20 minutes, though. Yeah. <laughs> but then other than that, we would take like uh we'd take like an extension cord and change out the cord instead of the little, you know, whatever three foot cord, put on like a 15 foot cord yeah. so that you could um, you know, make it easier to work with. Yeah. <sighs> Wrapped up a lot of cords in my day. <laughs> hey Brian, you're making us tired, you know. <laughs> Exhausting. Oh, making us tired. <sighs> Tell you what, I don't know what the Sam Phillips is doing. Looks like he's out in nature. Hey, so this this um, glass show. Yeah. How many of you guys are going? I'm going. I'm going. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, we'll be there. Hey, well, I want to say before we jump off, I want to I want to let everybody know we uh, we are going to do something on Tuesday night. I know Bills talked about doing something on Monday, but we yeah. are going to do something on Tuesday night at Top Golf. Um, I'm working on pairing up with somebody a little bigger than we are. You know, we're, we're not a big, really, you know, real big group. So uh, pairing up with somebody else to tie in with me on it. And I want to make sure everybody that's in the Zoom calls uh, that wants to be there and is going to be in Vegas plans on being there uh, Tuesday night. So Where's it uh, probably like a uh, Top Golf. Top Golf. Just like a, like a driving range. You don't have to. You don't have to hit golf balls if you don't want to hit golf balls. Oh. But, but we'll have food, um, drinks if you want to get your own drinks. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be a good time. Something like so you don't have to go sit in a restaurant and have uncomfortable conversation. Everybody can hang out and <laughs> lounge and <laughs> eat, eat, eat bad food and, and drink whatever you want. Hit some golf balls if you want. But it's and we're we're I won't say it's a hundred percent, but. Uh, we're, we're real close to, to getting locked in, uh, talking with them. And I want to make sure everybody that's here, that's going plans on being there. We're trying to determine time, uh, because West coast guys want to do it late and late for West coast guys means like super late for us East coast guys. So I don't know if I can make it past, you know, midnight, uh, East coast time, you know, doing it over there. So trying to figure that out, uh, so but the, make sure you plan. Where is it at on the in Vegas, Just... Tim, I couldn't tell you, buddy. I'd have Vegas? to, I'd have to pull the, I'd have to pull the map up and look at it. I have no idea. Yeah, I just have, use I, Google, Google Maps. Google's going to tell me where it's at. Yeah, yeah exactly. tell me where it's, Turn on, it's near the yeah. strip. I mean, because the, the cab's going to take the, me there. Yeah. yeah, the view from the from the Top Golf <laughs> looks out onto the strip, so it's got to awesome. be right there somewhere near the strip. So, we well, so know yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, we got two one. hours. Two hours. We'll probably do it like late dinner or after dinner, you know, something like cool. that. 
That sounds fun. Uh, so everybody, man. everybody yeah. plan on it. And uh, I want to definitely see everybody there. We'll have spots for, we're hoping like 30 or 40 people. So we got to make sure we pack it out and have a good time, you know, with all the shower yeah, guys. That's so. cool. There you shower go, man. And gals, shower guys and gals. And gals. So, Absolutely. And gals. You betcha. So, so everybody plan on that. Well, thanks, I'll get Billy. More details. Thanks yeah, for uh, heading that out. up, man. That was really cool of you. You took yeah, the initiative, like man. You don't have to be in up. charge to take charge. That's what I always say. Kind of mess up. You didn't ask me what my pronoun was. Are you well, yeah, like what's the pronoun? Or? Come on. <laughs> chill, chill on that, dude. We're, I don't even know what that. pronoun we're is. Not, we're not in California. What, what do I look like? An English major or something? <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> See you next week, man.